Welcome to the world of amazing animal builders. Hi, Henry. Planning something? Sure am. And it'll be fantabulous. Okay, guys, start them up. Roll it, roll it, roll it. Keep those tractors rolling. Don't just stand there. Get those feathers moving. We're burning daylight. Henry, you're not the only animal that knows how to build. There are many amazing animal builders. You could learn a lot from them. No time. Out of my way. Henry, these animals are all expert builders. Why not ask them for a little advice? Yeah, right. Henry, what these animals can build will really amaze you. Listen, I'd love to chat with your friends, but... But? But I've got work to do. Dig them up! Back them up! Okay, Mac! All kinds of animal builders construct all types of homes in all kinds of conditions. If you don't build a home, you can find yourself left out in the cold. Excuse me, I know that. Animals who build homes have somewhere to keep dry and warm. That's why so many creatures, from tiny insects to large mammals, are animal builders. Everyone needs somewhere to call home. And somewhere to have babies. Homes are for families, too. That's right, Henry. Even this jawfish built a home. Gesundheit! Who's moving in here? Bats, Henry. Bats? As in vampires? No, as in tent-making bats from Central America. Excuse me! Tent-making bats? That's amazing! They use their teeth to nibble the middle of a leaf so that it curls in on itself like a tent. Sure they're not Boy Scout bats. These tents are where the bats sleep during the day until it's time for them to go hunting at night. Lots of animals dig into the ground to make their homes, like this hog-nosed snake. Hey, Henry, I'm trying to explain about burrowing animals here. Henry, are you listening to me? Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Who wants to know? Hey, this could be my new home. You better check it out first. It might be occupied. Ah, looks like someone did get here first. Sorry to drop in without an invitation, but I was in the neighborhood. Hey, nice burrow you got here. Lots of cross traffic, though. Lots of animals, like rabbits, moles, and prairie dogs, dig burrows to live in. They have extra tough front claws to use as digging tools. I can dig it! Prairie dogs don't just dig homes, they dig entire cities. Hot diggity dog! Here on the surface, you can only see a few prairie dogs, but they're guarding the entrances to an underground prairie dog town. How many dogs are down there? There can be thousands, even more. Excuse me, that's amazing! Last century, some of the great prairie dog towns in North America had up to five million inhabitants. Five million? San Francisco hasn't got that many people! Don't worry, the lookouts call out the alarm to their neighbors. Talk about neighborhood watch! Prairie dogs have a complicated burrow system, so the rattlesnake can never catch them. Here's another burrowing rodent. He's busy as a you-know-what extending his home. Is he a beaver? Yes, an American mountain beaver, to be precise. I do love it when you're precise. This animal architect builds different rooms for different activities. There's a dining room for eating, a room for storing food, and a bedroom for sleeping. That's amazing! Leave it to Beaver! Okay, guys, take it away!
Let's get moving! Come on! Animals use a variety of materials to construct their homes. Bricks and cement, that's what I always use. That's what everybody should build with. <laughs> For human houses, bricks are great. But animals use whatever they can get for building materials. Is that so? This I gotta see. What kind of house is this? The roof's full of holes and the location's all wrong. And it's made of paper. Paper? You're kidding. Doesn't look like paper to me. It's made from wood pulp, the raw material that makes paper. The wasps' tiny mouths chew the wood and mix it with their saliva. Saliva? You mean spit? Yeah, Henry. The end result is that the nest is very light, but very strong. Some are bigger than a basketball. Mm, maybe we should poke our noses inside for a closer look. I wouldn't recommend that. Wasps are very protective of their home, and they pack a painful sting. <laughs> okay. I won't be a buzzy buddy. These birds have found an even stronger building material. Mud. Martins used to build their nests on cliffs. But now they prefer nesting on houses. That's why they're called house martins. A house martin will make hundreds of trips to finish the nest. When the mud dries out, it gets hard. Hard? Like concrete? Just like concrete. Amazing animal concrete. But even animal homes built with strong materials, like this termite mound, can be at risk from hungry home wreckers. How rude! The soldier termites protect the mound and launch an attack. Retreat! Now the worker termites will come out to repair their home by chewing dirt and mixing it with their saliva. Saliva? You mean more spit? Yes, Henry. The saliva and dirt make a quick drying mud. There's a lot to be done. The fierce soldier termites protect them while they work. Once more into the breach! While the soldiers keep fighting the good fight, the workers keep on with their rebuilding. Many termites make light work. It's a proverb. Once the mud is dry, the termites' mound will be just as strong as it was before. Wow! Amazing animal fortresses! This building is tiring me out. Time for a break. And now, Henry's Amazing Golden Gecko Award for the all-time best amazing animal builder. Third place bronze medal goes to the Mexican burrowing toad, who can hide by digging backwards and be totally covered in soil in just seconds. Second place silver goes to the jawfish. He actually uses his great big mouth to build his home. But my Golden Gecko Award for the all-time best amazing animal builder goes to... The Woodpecker! These guys have a specially hardened skull and cushioning around their brain to protect them while they do this hammering stuff. If they peck hard enough and long enough, hey, presto! in house. They also peck away looking for food. They peck through trees and cactus, which is softer. And it takes less work to build a house. So it makes for faster building and a quicker house. And when the woodpecker moves on, there's a ready-made home for other birds and animals to move into. The woodpecker, my all-time best amazing animal builder. Back to work already, Henry? Huh? Watch where you're going!
Some animals are into big time building. They build large. They build impressive. Ta da! Like me. This is my castle. I'm King Henry. I like the sound of that. It sounds strong. Invincible. Uh, King Henry, I've got a funny feeling. Something's about to. Timber! Oops. And I never got to cross my lovely moat. Oh. I'm sure the beaver didn't do it on purpose, Henry. Hasn't he got anything better to do? He was probably just keeping busy doing his own building work. The beavers cleverly build dams so that the entrance to their lodge is hidden underwater. This keeps them safe from predators. Beaver dams can be half a football field long, and they need constant attention. But often it's an upstream battle to keep the dam together. Here's another busy builder, but this one builds with leaves. It's just a bird. Birds only make little nests. Not this one. Not the brush turkey. It can spend all year building a nest of rotting leaves that's longer than a school bus. He won't be a cold turkey with a nest that big. It's not for him, Henry. The warmth from the rotting leaves incubates the female brush turkey's eggs. It's the perfect place for babies to be born. It's time for your special report. Henry, time for your report. Come here. You are ready, aren't you? Now? We're waiting for your report on the Bowerbird. The Bowerbird. Um, he's a bird, and he's, uh, he's sort ah. of an artist. He makes a special building out of twigs called the Bower. And? And then he has to decorate it. Now, the Bowerbird is the real bluebird of happiness, because every single decoration he uses is colored blue. Anything will do. Feathers, flowers, glass, anything, so long as it's blue. Uh, why doesn't he use any other colors? Here's what he told me. Henry, I'm an artist. I'm going through my blue period. Cousin Clint had his green. Uncle Hieronymus was into worms. But me, I'm true blue. But do you know why? Do you know why? Uh, sure, I know why. Sport. Sport? Yeah! This sport fan's team wears blue shirts. He goes to all their games dressed in blue from beak to tail. And you should see his place. Blue fridge, blue bathroom, even blue food. And guess what music he listens to? The blues. Oh. He drifts off to sleep in his blue bed and has, uh, black and white dreams. You see, animals can't dream in color. What's that got to... Dreams are the only thing in his life this Bowerbird can't make blue. It drives him crazy. So to make him feel better, he searches every day for some new blue decoration for his bower. Uh... So, if you're wondering why the Bowerbird loves blue stuff, it's because he dreams in black and white. And so he has to find something new in blue every single day of the year. And don't forget, Henry told you, so it's straight from the lizard's mouth. You really think anybody's going to believe that? Yeah!
Well, you were right about one thing. The Australian satin bowerbird does like the color blue. See? I told you! But it's nothing to do with sports or dreams. Oh. And everything to do with trying to attract a female. Oh. First, he builds a bower made of neatly cut dry grass and twigs. Then, he starts to decorate it with anything blue he can find. Blue flowers, feathers, beads, glass, blue anything. His collection appeals to the blue-eyed female. The prettier and bigger his collection is, the more it will impress her. Look! It's working! Well, I guess that's why they call it the blues. Or maybe not. Careful you don't fall, Henry. I know just what I'm doing. Okay, take it up. Most structures Come are on. built around a strong framework. Skyscrapers are held up by steel girders. Are you sure you know what you're doing, Henry? No problem. I know my way around. You sure? Of course. I always know where it's at. Things aren't always what they seem. This isn't a skyscraper. It's a spider's web. Yes, it is. But a spider's web is not only a well-constructed home. It's also a sticky trap for food. Organs called spinnerets on the abdomen of the spider feed out the sticky silk of the web. Many spiders build a new web every day. A new home every day? What happens to the old one? They eat it, then recycle it. That's amazing! Talk about environmentally friendly. A garden spider's web can be made from almost 100 feet of silk. Wow! 100 feet! And I thought spiders only had 8 feet! Henry. It's so, so... Intricate? Yeah, or even complicated. It sure looks hard to do. For a lizard, maybe. For a spider, it comes naturally. Once the home is built, it becomes a sticky trap. The sticky web is worked once again. After its meal, the spider repairs any holes in the web and waits for the next catch. hard to build. I'm sure a lizard could do it. Careful, Henry. Okay, I'm going, I'm going. Nests are another form of animal home, Henry, and there's far more to building them than you think. It's not so hard. Birds build nests by weaving twigs and grass together. Yeah, it's kind of messy though, isn't it? And it looks like it's only made of sticks and feathers. So how strong could it be? Much stronger than you'd expect, and it's light, which is very important if it's perched on a branch. <laughs> that wasn't so easy. Weaving things together does make them strong, Henry, and it's not just birds that do it. Look how this colony of weaver ants in Central America work together to make a nest. Using their powerful jaws, the ants pull the leaves into the shape they want and then use their children to stick them together. Don't they have child labor laws? Baby ants or grubs produce a kind of sticky fluid and when they're squeezed, out it comes to stick the leaves in place, just like glue. Excuse me! That's amazing! Builders don't just build homes, they also attract mates. You mean like whistling at people when they walk by? 
No, Henry. I mean like building a nest so females will come to mate with the male birds who built them. This weaver bird is building a nest to attract a female, just like all the other males. But he's a young bird, so he's not very good at it yet. Before a male can start courting a female, he has to finish his nest. Oh, this is so romantic. Having a good nest is important, but you've got to be a great dancer, too. Looks like she's checking him out. Our young bird has seen her. Oh, playing hard to get, eh? He's a pretty good mover. That kid sure can boogie oogie oogie. Now she's watching. Wanna come back to my place? Take a look at my weavings? There's tough competition around, and this older male's nest is bigger, better built, and finished. Don't give up! He's trying so hard! He deserves a girlfriend! It's not fair. Sorry, Henry. She's picked the bird with the deluxe nest. It'll be a better and safer place for her babies to grow up. But he works so hard! Well, if at first you don't succeed... Give up? No, try, try again. Oh. Okay, let's get out of here. You've seen some pretty amazing animal builders, Henry. I sure have. I've even picked up a few tips. Ah, so much to build, so little time. Animals are amazing builders. And it looks like you've built something yourself. But that home looks a bit small for you. Excuse me. It's a home for Boris, my pet spider. Not bad for a beginner, Henry. But you'd better leave the real work to those amazing animal builders.